a chord just so we have it going here. And then I figured, you know, I know most of you know me, um, AJ Giuliani here, and I've kind of talked with a lot of you or at least chatted with a number of you. But I wanted to give Anthony and Julia a chance to kind of introduce themselves, share a little about, about themselves, and then we'll just go around. Since we got a small crew here, let's just kind of talk about, like, what our job entails, what we do, um, you know, kind of our education history. Let's learn a little bit about each other. Um, just some of the conversation we're having right now is, is perfect because we can kind of share, um, you know, location, but also uh, some things that have worked for us. So go ahead, Anthony, you can start it out. No, I'll let Julie, you go first. <laughs> Hi. Ladies first. <laughs> Ladies first, Julie. Um, so I'm Julie. I'm Julie Devine, and I uh, work as an instructional technology specialist um, in Garnet Valley School District. And my job, um, I work kindergarten through 12th grade. And my job is to support teachers and um, students with lessons and um, projects. Um, we just started in our district about a year ago, um, really implementing the whole uh, culture of maker spaces. And so my job revolves a lot around um, getting teachers in those spaces, supporting them with lessons, like I said, and then integrating technology, um, you know, where it's meaningful. So. Um, I love my job and, um, I get to connect with a lot of different people and learn a whole lot, um, from my online communities as well as my teachers that I work with. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm Anthony Gabriel. I am the K-12 supervisor, uh, for curriculum and instruction for the Garden Valley School District. Uh, I oversee the arts, humanities, and literacy, and then really work hand in hand with our technology director on implementing a lot of the different literacy and tech initiatives, our future ready push, I'm the lead for our go open movement uh, with the open education resources right now. Prior to that, I was a classroom teacher for 14 years, English language arts, uh, half of that middle school, half of that high school, everything from advanced placement down to our lowest levels, uh, co-taught inclusion classes. Also in there worked in a similar um, vein to Julie as a literacy coach and then a literacy and tech coach for a few years mixed in. Um, I'm also a senior adjunct for the University of Pennsylvania uh, Grad School of Ed uh, for the Penn Literacy Network. And it's courses on um, curriculum, literacy, technology, things of that nature. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to be a part of, be a part of this. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's, just, let's just keep it going. Why don't we go down to uh, Katie here and then we'll kind of circle around. Just again, introduce yourself. It's nice to put a face. I know on Facebook and stuff, we get a face, but nice to put a face to the name. Uh, just share a little bit about your education journey, you know, what you've learned so far in the academy, what you're working on. Okay, Katie. Um, I'm an instructional technology specialist as well and at a small uh, independent school in Little Rock. Um, prior to moving back home, um, I was in Memphis for seven years and taught English in the high school ninth and 10th grade and then moved to teaching writing in seventh grade. Um, and then when I moved back home, I decided I wanted a little change. So I went back to school, um, got a master's and started um, at Episcopal Collegiate. And I've been there for, this is my uh, fifth year. So I, again, I work with teachers and students integrating technology. We had a, um, lab that we didn't need anymore since we went one-to-one -one. and so I convinced after two years of trying I convinced um, our administration to let me turn that into a makerspace and then this year we also started um, a class called exploratory design and mm -hmm. so we do um, in sixth grade it's an elective in seventh and eighth grade it's a semester requirement and um, we do a lot of engineering and design hands-on um, most of the teachers walk by and they think that chaos is happening in the lab on most days, but it's been a wonderful experience. It was a way for me to get back in the classroom. Um, and it's just been great. So this, um, Academy has been wonderful. I went to my director when I saw it and I said, I'm just going to sign up for this and you know, you can pay me back or the school can pay me back if they want to, but I'm doing it anyways. And he was like, okay, do it. Um, but he's really great about, you know, letting me kind of do whatever it is that I think is best. And so it's just been, a, I've loved, uh, I like learning with people from all over the country and outside of that the country. And so it's just been great to, you know, hear everybody's story and 
it, it's also refreshing to know that there's so many things that are similar and we're all having some of the same kind of struggles and, and things happening in our schools. And that sometimes it can feel kind of lonely and you're like the only one that isn't getting what you want to get accomplished done. But it's nice that to hear, you know, that everybody has things that happen and struggles and, you know, it's a, it's a learning process and we're all, you know, trying to figure it out. So. Awesome. Thanks Katie. We're going to keep the introductions going and just sharing what you kind of learned so far in the Academy. Aaron, why don't we go with you on my top right? All right. Sounds good. Sorry. I had to unmute myself there for a minute. Um, so I, um, in currently in Parker, Colorado. Um, I teach on Highlands Ranch, um, which is just a little bit west of here. So we're south of Denver. Um, and I am in Douglas County um, and in my eighth year of teaching first grade right now. Um, so I, Douglas County is, um, has been going through a lot of changes over the last, um, gosh, really probably eight years since I've started there. Um, a lot of pushes towards um, more personalized learning and um, kind of finding, you know, we have a lot of schools who are project-based learning schools or design thinking, um, quite a variety. So I'm at a school where um, we have a lot of freedom to kind of pursue our own pathway. Um, and so that's kind of part of what led me here. Um, um, actually, my teammate that I team teach with is here, Kristen. Um, so she, we are doing this um, Innovative Teaching Academy together right now. And so we are currently um, doing a lot of team teaching. We've um, for years now kind of been on this journey of personalized learning um, with our first graders and um, have had the opportunity to meet with a lot of different um, people and, and brainstorm and have kind of formed within our district our own little cohort group of primary teachers who are also trying to personalize learning for kids and integrate that design thinking process and um, so here we are. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let's keep it going with uh, your partner in crime, Kristen. Uh, she can introduce herself as well. Go ahead, Kristen. Hi, um, I'm Kristen Wright, and I live in Highlands Ranch, so I live kind of closer to the school that we actually teach at, and I keep having to go back and forth because it's bedtime, and so I'm trying to get my little guy, he's three, to stay in his room, so if I get up, I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> Not at all. We're there. I'm there too. Um, but uh, like Aaron said, we just are really passionate about um, providing choice for our first graders and through personalized learning and actually um, stumbled upon launch uh, last summer. And we really have been using that kind of as a framework for everything we do, not just like these design thinking projects but we've been using it for like reading and writing and um but sometimes we feel kind of like we're on an island and even though we have a really supportive administration and there's pockets of amazing like innovative things happening in our district you still feel um alone sometimes um and so we just kind of jumped on this together we kind of started writing this blog about a year ago and we just haven't really gotten it off the ground. And so that was kind of another thing that we really wanna do is just kind of, I think people think that just because they're little that they can't do certain things. And, um, and so I think our big goal is to prove to people that that doesn't really matter that even the littlest learners um, can do amazing things given the opportunity. So that's just kind of why we're here. And it's just been fun, I think, to hear everyone's journey. And it's just nice, like someone said before, that to meet people who are struggling with the same things you are. And um, it's just been encouraging for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's so encouraging just to kind of hear your stories and the fact that you joined together and that your first grade teach. I mean, it's just fantastic, you know, coming from someone who taught high school to kind of hear uh, what's happened at the elementary level. We need it to happen, right? We need those kids to not accept worksheets <laughs> when they're getting into middle school and high school to want to do something better with their learning. So thanks again so much for joining. I love that you guys are together. And uh, I, might, I might be seeing you guys in June, right? You will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So awesome. So, awesome. Yeah, we both um, have signed up for like both your keynotes and then 
we also are going to go to one of your breakout sessions. Nice. June so. 6th and 7th. I'll be there. So now yeah. I know yeah. we're, this is in Colorado. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, let's jump to you. Go ahead, Chris. All right. Um, so I teach, I guess, at our at Wilmington Friends School. Uh, right now I teach fifth grade. This is my second year in fifth, but I was in third for a while before that. Um, what I'm the reason I started doing the course I, I've been doing genius hour the last two years I kind of brought it to my school I piloted it in third grade it was uh, minimally successful I think that year uh, worked, worked in some ways and failed in a lot of others um, I got I was really fortunate when I moved to fifth the other two teachers were very much on board with the idea and helped me grow it over the last two years um, and I think the first, these past two years, it's been a lot about student choice and helping kids reflect. Um, but we're really interested in trying to get more of the design, the design thinking elements into it. Um, it's been really interesting to see a lot of kids, even when they're given a lot of choice, limit themselves and what they choose. So they'll end up doing projects or they'll tell you they want to do projects like uh, PowerPoints and and just very basic presentations with posters and dioramas. And I think it's just because that's what they did in first, second, third, fourth. Um, so they don't know all the options out there. So we've been really trying to expand their, their minds and figure out what else they can do. Um, so I'm excited to see a few of the projects this spring. They're a lot more uh, exciting. So um, that's a big piece of it for me. Uh, the blogging has been kind of just a bonus lately. Uh, I didn't expect to get into it as much as I have. Oh, he's uh, got the bug. He's got the blogging bug. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Now my brothers and sisters are kind of making fun of me on Facebook about it. But <laughs> that's I'll when it's real. It. That's when it's real. <laughs> that's when you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are kind of the big things. And and I'm, uh, this summer we're going. I've I kind of got a group together. The school is now jumping on kind of the design thinking bandwagon and we've got a whole group of six teachers going down to San Antonio to the Henry Ford Learning Institute uh, to do a three-day workshop on design thinking. So wow, that's it's, awesome. that's it's awesome. really exciting to see where it's going and I'm, I'm just kind of glad to be a part of it. That is awesome to hear your basketball coach, right? And, yeah. uh, and so you're kind of working with all different levels of learners there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a, I really value it because I get to see kids, you know, this, this is my first class that's going to graduate this year. Um, but when I had them in third grade, they're just graduating getting ready for college now. So I've seen them from third grade all the way up through playing sports in high school and now headed off to college. So that is awesome. I mean, I think, you know, that, that human social relationship side is, is so important. Um, it's interesting too. You brought up the blogging, Chris, because I, I want to ask a question about that later. I'll ask it to everybody, but I'm interested to see. You know, blogging can be really difficult, but then it also can kind of catch you off guard, and you like it. And it, and it, and I think a lot of people equate writing with like grad school papers and things that they don't want to do, and then all of a sudden you start blogging and you like it. So I'm interested to kind of hear some perspective a little bit. Uh, but let's keep going with these. Um, with these introductions. I see Lynn there. How about Lynn? How about you share, introduce yourself and share out? Hi, um, Lynn Cashel. I teach fourth grade in Bethel Springs Elementary School in the Garnet Valley School District. I apologize I got there a little late because of everything else in this course. <laughs> My technology <laughs> holds me back. So I have audio but no video anymore. I started with video. I don't know what happened. So that's we why can you see you. Can we can see you, Lynn. All right, you can see me. Love yeah. it. <laughs> my dog is snoring behind me so I, <laughs> um, I joined the academy I've been teaching for 21 years and I decided you know I, I read about genius hour and I tried it out this year I loved it the kids loved it and I wanted to do more and um, you know all the things that I've been learning so far I'm a creative soul at heart and I just want to do more and more of those things with my kids uh, let them be kids again we've been we just had day eight of state testing and uh, it's awful <laughs> and I can't teach anything. I can't use any technology while they're taking tests. It's, it's been a very difficult time, but I, I have just in the things that we've done in the last month, 
like, wow, so many new things on my plate that I never thought of that I would know how to do. And now when I look at other people's websites and see things posted on there, I go, it's like, I know how that got there. So, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, excited about that. And I appreciate everybody's input as you know, trying to follow bits and pieces and just you post one thing and you get three new ideas and it's great. That's Thank right. You. It's true. All right. Well, thanks for uh, checking in, Lynn. We got a Garnet Valley contingent here, which is awesome. Um, let's, let's jump over to Michael there. Michael, you want to share? Introduce yourself. Hey guys, are you able to hear me on here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Mike. I teach ninth and 10th grade English in Hilton, New York. Um, actually born and raised in Staten Island. Uh, so my first teaching job was in Brooklyn at an all special ed high school for kids with emotional disturbances. Wow. Um, so I didn't really learn uh, much about teaching at that point. It was more like a, a big brother program, so to speak. Um, and I then worked at a co-op program through a VA hospital, uh, which was pretty neat. Uh, but once again, I didn't really uh, learn much on the teaching front. Um, you were just trying to help kids get through life. Um, so I made a little bit of a selfish move and I left those kids and I started teaching um, in a quote unquote regular school. Uh, and then my wife is from this upstate New York area. So happy wife, happy life. And I uh, moved up here to an IB district. Um, and actually took, I left a 10 year job and I took a sub job in a middle school. Um, somehow I, I made that call, but um, this past year I got a job at the high school. So I think I finally found a landing spot after eight, eight years. Um, so with that in mind, I just would like to be really good um, for the kids that I feel like I'm gonna be with for a while in a community I feel like I'm gonna be in for a while. So, I saw this, I've done, I'm a big hoarder of information. I read a lot. Um, and then it's like, what do you do with all that? And this kind of seemed like a true call to actually act upon all this stuff that you've been compiling. So uh, pretty cool so far. I like writing, had a journalism degree that my go. parents are real happy that I'm not using. So <laughs> I think the blogging uh, could, could be a, a good thing for me and we'll see. That's, that is, that is so true. I, I think it's interesting when you say IB school, how many, I wonder how many folks know what kind of an IB school is. You want to explain that a little bit? International baccalaureate. It's a designation. Um, I think our like feather in our cap was where the first one to go K, K through 12. Oh, wow. Um, That's awesome. And I, Maybe AJ could explain it better than me, but uh, there's a lot of inquiry and conceptual based stuff, but also like an international type connection to things. Um, so there's like service learning involved and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, we're still, you know, trying to figure things out, but um, in terms of curriculum and stuff, it's not really, in, it's not a huge crack down on what I would like to do. I still feel a lot of freedom to present yeah. things the way I would like to. Yeah. Um, there's only a fair number of non-negotiables, like which texts you teach and when you teach them and the same summative and things like that. But for the most part, it's, it's been, uh, it's been going okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think when you look, talk about international baccalaureate school, you were talking a really inquiry based school. Uh, and one of the best programs, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of programs, but if you're looking at a program, a K through 12 kind of inquiry program, it's one of the best uh, that you could find. And it, it really is about a lot of student choice, a lot of project based type stuff. And as, um, as you're saying, there's definitely some freedom still there for teachers. There's the art of teaching uh, that's allowed in there, which is, which is nice. So it was interesting to hear that you were there. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's keep on going down the line here. Betsy, go ahead. Um, all right. Good. All right. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm in that boat with the toddler. My two and a half year old is still <laughs> monitor asleep at the moment, but right. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to off and I was muted because I was running back down. Um, 
Excel. So I got the one eye on the monitor, but that's how I've been doing most of this uh, course. Um, this is kind of my like course and ice cream time of the night here. Uh, you, you know, you sneak out and eat all the things that you don't want your kid to eat. So uh, um, it's interesting to do, to look at this and see all the faces for a change, because that's kind of a shock. Um, I am a school librarian. I have been for nine years. I was a music teacher before that. And I'm currently in a K to two school. It's my second year in that school. I was K to five for 14 years, um, all in the same school. And so that was kind of a, a major jolt. And making that shift kind of caused me to really like look at what I was doing and what do I really want to be doing. And um, one of those instances uh, that taking the opportunity that appeared at a time and you thought, oh, I should take that opportunity. It was in that um, reading that we were doing at the end of the, the April that PDF that we're reading and I, uh, Hardy, was it his name? Yeah, Benjamin um, Hardy. Yeah, and so, and it popped up and I was like, oh, hey, that's one of those opportunities. So I jumped into this opportunity because it showed up. Still not sure if it's the right one, um, but it's a really interesting experience because it's forced me, as a couple other people have mentioned, to really look at what younger kids can do. Um, uh, having been in a K to five, I think I put a lot of emphasis on my three, four, five previously. And then I came here and I thought, wow, I either have to up my game or I'm gonna go crazy bored because I was not challenging them and therefore was not challenging me. And I thought, well, if I'm bored, then what are they gonna do? Right. So um, I uh, had done the iMOOC and then was reading the stuff for this about you know all the idea hoarding. And I've got boxes full of ideas and someday some of those are gonna be great, but I don't know when and I don't quite know how. Um, so, so I, this, this seemed like a great opportunity um, to find out that it wasn't just me and, uh, and maybe there was a solution. Um, so uh, it's, been, uh, it's been an interesting experience trying to kind of fill in the blanks. It's a little overwhelming, to be honest. You know, like I felt like my blog was going well coming out of iMOOC and now I'm like total hit the wall. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm doing it all wrong. Um, and I'm hoping that pendulum swings back up in the near future. But uh, it's, uh, it's been interesting to, to carry it straight through in um, a little bit different kind of interaction right now uh, than, than what it was coming from that other experience of connecting with people online where this is a lot more, I think, introspective and forcing me to look more at what I'm doing instead of just paying attention to what everybody else is doing, which is what I found I did in that um, iMove course. I was mostly just kind of watching what everybody else did. And this is forcing me to look a little bit more at what I'm doing. So it's kind of an interesting experience here. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, I, I still go through that pendulum all the time, to be quite honest. I mean, I'm, I'm there all the time when, it, when I read a blog post and it really resonates with folks and mm -hmm. I'm getting comments or shares, or those different types of things. It is only natural to feel like that, right? I mean, I don't know if there's dopamine dripping in my head if somebody's sharing the blog post, but there's something happening, right? It is, it is very natural to kind of have those highs and lows anytime you're putting yourself out there because the act of blogging is launching something to the world. It may not feel like you're launching a huge project or a product, but you're launching an idea, a reflection, a piece of view. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it doesn't get easier. Uh, it just becomes, it feels more normal. So I don't, I don't know <laughs> if that's a good way to explain it, but um, it definitely doesn't get easier and you still have those pendulum swings. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for being so honest, Betsy. All right, let's uh, hop over to uh, Deidre. Did I pronounce that right, Downey? Um, yes, hold on. All right. Do you hear me? We do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done anything like this before, so I have no idea. Well, you're, I guess what, that's what we're I didn't even know what Zoom was. I said, oh, download. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I've we're never done right This whole experience has been really crazy for me because I never even had a Facebook account. <laughs> <laughs> I am really new. <laughs> so uh, I'm Dedra Downing. Dedra is my first name. And I'm in California, San Jose, um, in a little tiny district, Oak Grove School District. We're K-8. And this is my 23rd year of teaching and uh, mostly primary. Um, I did special day for a couple years, then went to kinder. And most of my years have been spent in a one-two combo forever. <laughs> and um, we're doing a, a Sobrato SEAL program, but I'm trying to build in um, 
some innovations and some other kind of projects. And um, so I do a lot of grounds up kind of stuff. Um, and so I'm, I got in EMOOC like the last person and got hooked and then actually made a, a, my own blue host domain and moved my thing over to a .org instead of a .com. And gosh, I have Facebook and now whatever Zoom is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that is, I'm on here with all of you. That's awesome. And, and I love that you're just jumping in. Honestly, that I, I always want to kind of share some different things, right? Because Zoom works really well for having 12 people in a room versus a Google Hangout. I always kind of want to share different tools that have different purposes. Um, but it's so awesome to hear you're just like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm jumping in. I'm trying it. I love that. I love that attitude. I love that mindset. Yeah, it's it's been a good experience. I, I almost got my principal reading my blogs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm sending it to him now. And um, he asked me about it again today. And I, I said, oh, I got a comment on one of my blogs. And so he's like going to read it now again. And he's kind of curious. He hasn't quite, you know, he's very new. We've gone through a lot of principals, but um, the PD's a little slow at my school because of that, the transition. You can't get leadership. So um, he knows I'm doing this crazy thing and called blogging and all these new technologies. And so, you know, who knows what I can bring back. That's awesome. That's so, I appreciate the time. It is. It's great to hear. All right, Becky, I saw that you uh, popped back on and you had video. Let's see if you have voice. Go ahead, Becky. Yes. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I'm using my husband's uh, Bose headphones. I bought them for Christmas that I Fancy. steal when I go on the airplane. <laughs> Um, it doesn't look like my video is very clear, though. So I'm a K-5 STEM teacher in Barrington, Illinois. Mostly I do Lego robotics, uh, Mindstorms, and we do with third and fourth graders. And I thought I was going to love it. This is my dream job. But I do the same thing 26 times. So I'm at four <laughs> schools. And every third grade, every fourth grade at every school. And there's a, I have a counterpart this year that I'm training a little bit, too. So I'm still trying to figure out. What do I need to do to love my job? Um, I love autonomy and I love being able to um, be creative. And so having to do the same thing that many times is, is a little too much. I, I, I came from middle school though. I taught eighth grade science. Um, so then you're doing it, you know, four or five times a day, but um, doing that plus um, all throughout the year is, is proving to be a lot. Um, so I've left education a couple of times. So I've done product development, um, developing hands-on STEM materials. I'm still doing a little bit of that now. Um, I've worked at a museum. Um, otherwise, um, I do a lot of professional development, uh, freelance um, presentations, workshops, and editorial right now. So I'm trying to figure out um, where my niche is, what I want to do. So I love the blogging piece because that's helping me push myself to get out there. I would like to um, get into the writing as well and, and submit to Science Scope and STA Press. Um, so I really like that part. I also was just at uh, STEM Summit, the 100K in 10 um, initiative in New York City, um, and met Kevin Day, who is also an ITA uh, person. So that was a yes. happy meeting. That was really fun. Um, and then this summer, we always do a, a book read. So Launch is one of the books um, mm. for choice for reading this summer. And last summer, I read Innovator's Mindset. So great book. the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> great books. Well, I'm glad we got video, and I'm glad your husband has such an awesome headset that you can use. I think I'm it. getting it for Mother's Day. There you go. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Judy, go ahead. Sorry, you, you were the, I think you're the last one, and you were waiting extremely patiently. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, good I morning. Love, I'm in China. I love that. Can you hear? Good morning. That's nice. so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So cool. Oh, my gosh. And I'm actually um, homesick today. So it was sort of serendipitous because this was happening. And it's, yeah. Anyways, it's a better, better way to feel unwell is to be with you people. So right. thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, Anyways, I am a, I also am an IB educator. I am a um, PYP coordinator. So I have the pleasure of um, coordinating all the curriculum from the pre-K until grade five. And um, 
Our school is also goes to grade 12, so I work on what's called the continuum from DP and MYP. Um, so that's really exciting for me. I love it. And um, we do a lot of design actually in the MYP, the middle years program, but we don't do so much in the PYP. And that's how I actually got um, deeply curious about it. And that's how I got hooked up with you, AJ, because I thought your, your, your ideas and launch were like, hey man, why aren't we doing that here? This totally is a great uh, match with um, inquiry-based learning. Yeah. To me, design thinking is just another iteration or another perspective on inquiry-based learning. I agree. And so, um, yeah, so that's, I was in the IMU group as well, and I thought that was awesome. And I just felt like this was my next step. I, I, um, because I am an IB educator and I, I live overseas, my community is actually quite small. You know, I only network with the people that are in my network kind of thing. And right. I'm blocked by um, the great firewall. This is a blessing that my VPN is working and I can, I can have video and you have no idea how, how fortunate you are to have good internet. I just want to say that. Um, anyways, so I, um, I love all the blogging that's been going on because for me personally, uh, I feel like the longer I teach, 21st century learning, the, the more I realize that I need to be a 21st century learner. I need to be getting my hands dirty in the stuff because I, I can't really teach what I don't know. And I want kids just not to be consumers, but I want them to be creators and connectors that I have to up level my game so I can be an effective mentor for them. And so um, that's just kind of like where I'm coming from. And I, I'm really grateful that I find like minded individuals like you and we're all coming from different perspectives, and I think that's really awesome. So glad to be here with you guys this morning. That's awesome. Even on your sick day, you know, I was, I saw the light, and I'm like, where are you? And then I'm like kind of looking up. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I think you're live from China. So it's so awesome. So awesome to have you here. I'll show you what kind of, but it's not a nice day here in China. It's not, it's not very pretty. I'm sorry. It's been really nice, but today, not so good. <laughs> It still looks pretty good. It still looks pretty good out there. Um, you know, what's interesting that you brought up, Judy, is the, is the, the blogging piece, right? So very purposefully, very intentionally, this first month has been all about blogging. And if you kind of went through the, the blogging mini course, you kind of know why. There's really three reasons. Number one, blogging has you reflect on your personal practice and just where we are as individuals and educators and those different types of things. And quite honestly, I know I don't take enough time to reflect, right? Like I am busy from the moment I wake up doing something, going to school, going to work, coming home, taking one of my four kids to a practice somewhere, coming back, trying to stuff some food in my face, and then trying to watch a show on Netflix with my wife, right? Like that's what that's what we, we do, right? We're, we're all kind of in these busy, busy, busy patterns, and it's really tough to find time to reflect. So I think blogging helps me at least schedule that. But the other piece is you're going from being a passive consumer to an active participant and, yeah. and, an, and an active leader. You know, I think when you blog, you are leading a conversation or you are following up on a conversation. And I think a lot of times, we don't give enough credit uh, for what bloggers do. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, right? As a lot of you have kind of figured out. But when I, see, when I see people on the Facebook group or inside the academy kind of posting their blog posts and sharing with the world, like, you don't know how awesome that is to have a community of people that are sharing their thoughts, commenting on each other's work, uh, and kind of pushing it forward. So I just, I know that that's the foundation, right? This month we're talking about you know, social media and those different types of things. But if you're not reflecting and if you're not kind of blogging and getting those ideas out to the world, I think all the other stuff uh, becomes moot. And, and I do believe that uh, consistency is the hardest part, right? Um, I am going to point out Anthony because uh, <laughs> Anthony and I, I don't know if, if, you, if some of you know this, but Anthony and I taught together uh, for seven years. Um, maybe eight years, no, seven, eight, years. Yeah, maybe seven or eight years. Yeah, and then we, uh, and then I was a tech coach and he was a lit coach for a school district, uh, for a couple of years as well. We're really good friends. 
and I bother Anthony every day to blog. Every I day. I really do. <laughs> I bother him every day because he is like one of the best educators I know. He's somebody who has mentored me tremendously, and I just want him to get his ideas, the work that he's doing out to the world. I don't know, Ann, if you want to share a little bit about kind of your blogging ups and downs. Sure. So, you know, as AJ mentioned, we, uh, we worked together for quite some time teaching high school English, coaching lacrosse together. And um, AJ coming into our district really enhanced a lot of the work we were doing and took it to a level that was global, you know, and that was connected. And, and then I think, you know, as AJ, you know, he got me on Twitter a long time ago now, but I was on Twitter, but I wasn't on Twitter. You know, I was, I had a Twitter account, wasn't really doing much. It was just kind of consumer of information. And then I attended a conference up in New York at Eric Scheninger's um, high school in New Milford when he was still a principal. And I sat there and I looked and I saw all these people talking to each other. I had never met before, or kind of like, you know, meeting in person for the first time. And I realized I was missing a pretty big piece. And so I, you know, reached back out to AJ because he had started his sort of blog. And I remember that last year we worked together every day. You know, he got to get up early in the morning. He'd come in. I wrote a thousand words today. I wrote 1500 words today you now. And it, um, so I started a blog, opened up my, my domain. I started writing a couple posts on what I knew. Um, and, and I, I've just, I've, I've struggled, you know, it was at a time when I was changing roles, I was changing jobs. We have the twins now are five, we're all turning five in about a month. Um, you know, so it's a lot of those other life factors. I own a real estate business outside of here as well. So trying to keep up with that. And I feel like the, the struggle with the, with the writing piece is I, as an English teacher by trade, you know, I probably overcomplicate, you know, I heard George talk about this at that talk earlier, you know, we tend to overcomplicate things like this. I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that uh, in terms of over complicating and writing and, and the reflection piece in terms of blogging. So it's been a sort of a love hate relationship for me. Um, this is, I'm hoping getting me back into the love side of it. Um, so, but again, I've got like three posts in draft form right now and I'm just trying to get my brain wrapped around getting them done and getting them out to, to, to the Academy and to the world. But it has, it's definitely been an up and down ride. How many, how many of you feel like that little show of hands, right? And blogging a little, a little up and down, right? I mean, everybody feels like that. So I, I hope that you can find solace in a community of people that want to blog and still struggle with that act. It is not something that is easy or else everybody would be doing it. And just the, the act and going through that process. Um, somebody just wrote, I think it was Lynn. Um, she wrote, I feel like my blogging is all over the place. I think if I keep at it, I will land someplace. And yes, I, I think, um, I think you will, right? I think, uh, by putting your words, by putting your ideas onto the world, you will find who you're speaking to, who resonates with your story, um, and you will you will land someplace definitely. So I did want to kind of open it up to some some questions. You know, this um, this past month was kind of all about blogging and was really about kind of some goal setting and and talking about systems. This month right now is is tackling a pretty big piece, which is technology. A lot of times people say technology is innovation or innovation has to have technology. That's not the case, but it does play a big role, right? It does play a big role. The fact that we are all able to have 13, 14 people right now, all chatting online in real time. And one of us is in China. <laughs> that's because of technology, right? You know, we, we just redefined what communication and collaboration could look like through this tool. So I, I wanted to kind of open it up to some questions, um, questions you had about what's coming up uh, this past month, or just observations, things you can share. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go in any particular order, um, but I, we're, we're kind of all adults. So if somebody talks louder, you let that person go. Who wants to go first? I'm a really good at, at a wait time too. As a teacher, I'm fantastic at wait time. It was one of my strong points. Okay, I have a question. I'll go. All right. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so I think that um, one thing that I struggle with is like when to tweet, when to Instagram, when to post your blog on Facebook. Like how, um, like I can get sucked down the Twitter like rabbit hole, right? And I learned so much amazing things, but then I never like retweet. I just like things or retweet what other people say. I don't like add my own two cents, right? 
Or then like I see this thing on Instagram and I'm like, oh, I really like that. But I guess like finding like how does it all connect or how can you like make it more cohesive so you're not spent I feel like I need my own social media person kind of <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> like what I need you know someone to manage that for me and because it, it takes so much time yeah um actually what's what's really interesting is you almost did like I, I think I might have paid you to set me up for this month's <laughs> course so thank you um, so, so this month's course is all about social media with a purpose and there are a number of lessons in there specifically that deal with the thing that you're talking about. So just a couple of things that I talk about in the course that I'll reiterate here. Number one, you need to schedule your time for social media. Don't let social media schedule you. Okay. All right. So don't for, number one thing everyone should do in this group right now is turn off all notifications for social media. I'm being honest, like turn off your Facebook to phone notifications, your Twitter notifications, turn off all that. Because when you allow notifications to pop up on this thing, then it takes control of you. Right. Uh, and so, and so then you're, you're just distracted. It's that dopamine. Oh, somebody commented on my tweet. Somebody yeah. wrote this, the Facebook group, somebody's talking and you don't have any way to kind of turn that up. We're natural. We want to communicate. We want to have conversations. So first thing I would say is you schedule your time. You figure out what works for you. Maybe it's, maybe it's at lunch. You want to take 15 minutes and, and do some, you know, hop on Twitter or uh, when you get home from work or at night after the kids go to bed, anything that works for you specifically schedule that. The second thing I would say is just start with one platform. Um, I, I personally, and I think some of you do follow me on Instagram. I only use Instagram for personal stuff. I post pictures of my kids of stuff I'm doing with my family. I don't use it for professional. Um, on Facebook, I only use uh, the pages and this, this Innovative Teaching Academy group and the Genius Hour group. Those are only two real groups that I'm active member and a part of, and that's what works for me. Twitter is the place where I do most of my sharing and communicating because it, again, it kind of works for me, right? Um, right. So find, it doesn't have to be Twitter. It could be any one of those spaces, but find one that maybe really works for you. Um, so that'd be the second thing. The third thing is you do have assistance out there and its name is buffer. How many of you have, have used buffer before? Okay. Um, there is a whole lesson on automation and systems and a whole nother lesson on buffer inside the, uh, the course, the okay. uh, social media course. What buffer allows you to do is schedule out tweets, schedule out Facebook posts. And so, I will go on to buffer at like 5:30 in the morning and I'll have a bunch of articles that I liked and that I want to share out, but I don't want to share out 10 articles at one time. Right? right. So I put them into buffer and it automatically schedules them in an hour or two hour increments. And then I don't have to be on Twitter tweeting them out all day, but I still can share out good things with an audience, with people, with the community. And so buffer is that, is that social media intern that you've always wanted. Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> So you can, all, you can hook up multiple accounts as well. So you can okay. go to Twitter, to Google Plus, to, to whatever. So there's, you know, you can pay for more, but I think it gives you five or six for, for the free, oh, wow. okay. free cost where you can hook up a few social yeah, it's media totally accounts. free. Yeah. Put it in once, as AJ said, schedule it. You know, people are like sitting in a, you know, room with a the teacher. They're like, wait, are you tweeting right now? I'm like, no, you know, but it's blowing up on their phone because it's, it's scheduled out that way. Awesome. Yeah, really, really good question. I think that's something we all struggle with. And uh, I actually remember a time where I was, I still had all those notifications on my phone and I just kind of started Twitter and my wife looked at me, we we're at the beach on vacation. She's like, why are you on your phone? Like, what are you doing? Is there, and I'm like, oh, um, actually I wrote a blog post and like some people are tweeting it out. She's like, get a life, right? You know, she's, she's, she's calling me out. And she was so right. I should, I should be present when I'm on a beach and not on my phone tweeting. And I had let it schedule me instead of me scheduling that time. So something that we definitely all um, struggle with. Really, really good question. Thanks for asking it. What else? What else is going on? What else is on your mind? Hmm. Anything about the course so far? Anything you would like to see added? Um, you know, I, I know that this coming month we're having um, a interview with Jennifer Gonzalez, who wrote the Teacher's Guide to Tech and who runs the uh, website Cult of Pedagogy. 
and she has a, a podcast called a pedagogy. If you haven't checked that out, she's fantastic. She'll be talking about like when to use technology for, for different purposes, right? And, and what tools to use for what. Uh, we're also going to have a, um, a interview with uh, Mrs. Q. Anybody know, ask Mrs. Q. Her name's Saba, and she is probably the most followed educator on Snapchat. She uses Snapchat all the time. And we all know if you have students that are above the age of, I don't know, because my second grade daughter uses Snapchat. Um, Snapchat has become the, the social kind of media, the social network of choice for, for uh, young people. Uh, it's kind of overtaking Instagram, right? They're probably neck and neck, right? Um, so she's going to kind of dive into Snapchat uh, for us as well. So we have some of these great kind of resources and things coming up on top of the, the course and those things in there. Is there anything else you'd like to see or any other questions that you have? I have a question about Twitter. All right. Um, so there's all these great chats I know that are going on and in the Twitter sphere, which I'm kind of, I mean, the last seven years of my life, I've lived in censored uh, countries, so I don't really go on a Twitter. But when I did the iMOOC, I felt like I had to be on Twitter and doing the, the, the Twitter chats, which I really thought were cool. And I, I enjoyed it and I learned a lot. And I would like to participate in more of these kinds of chats. Um, but sometimes the timing is off because if they're happening in another country or whatever, it's just problematic. Is there any way that you can go back to former chats? Like, can you ever, um, um, I don't know what the word is. Like, are they archived? Yes. Yes. So um, I, I'll share a link right now in the, okay. in the chat. And this is a link of kind of every active um, Twitter chat. And I'll also share a link of the official chat calendar. So it has okay. every single day of the month and what time chats are going. So I share those in the, in the course um, that, that kind of just dropped for May as well. But one of the things that you're going to see about these chats is, is kind of two things. Number one, you can always scroll back in time and, and kind of look at the chat live. Number two, a lot of the folks that run these chats create Storifies. Have you ever heard of a Storify? It's S-T-O-R-I-F-Y. A little, yes. And on Storify.com, you can search um, old archives of chats as well. So that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, and there's a number of things you can do. But I would, I would check, honestly, I would check that list and see which one of those chats kind of jive with your time, right? Um, the only times available, I think, on this chat calendar are like, you know, Eastern Standard Time for the U.S., Pacific Standard Time. But um, I think if you kind of figure it out, there might be some ones that at least you could catch maybe the hour after or something like that. Um, and see well, I was really lucky for the iMOOC because it happened before school started for me. Gotcha. So... That was kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if that's always so serendipitous, but that was just nice for that. Yeah. Yeah. But I would check out that list and see which ones, you know, that kind of align to your interests and things you're looking at. And, you know, I, I know the activity for this week is to try to get some folks joining Twitter chats just to be a part of the process. It's weird. Your first couple of times doing it. Uh, you don't know how to respond. You're just like watching this stream of, of comments come through and not sure if you should retweet or like or respond and then more come through. Um, but it's one of those things that you kind of just have to be that, that looker at first and just kind of participate in before you can kind of get the hang of it. I'm telling you, uh, hosting a Twitter chat and running one is like one of the hardest things to do online. Um, you know, it really, it really is. The only way that I can do it is by using that tool buffer to schedule out the questions and then try to participate during the chat, right? Um, so, but being a, being a participant, um, I think you just have to pick and choose your points. It is hard with some of them. That's a good question though, Judy. Thank you. I have a question about blogging. All right. Okay. Um, I'm always not sure where to do it. Uh, I've done it on my website. I put out two tonight through, I typed them up in WordPress and then put it on 
it went onto my website. But then you also introduced Medium and Triber, and then there's the Facebook posts. So where does it go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're doing the you're doing the uh, the right thing first, Lynn, which is posting it on your actual website, your blog, right? Yes. But then you want to take the URL, the link to that blog post, right? Right. And you want to share that on Facebook. You want to share that on Twitter. You want to share that so other people can kind of be uh, brought back to your website. Um, Medium is, is interesting. How many of you signed up for Medium? And you, you don't have to, obviously. But um, I found that Medium, especially when uh, you're just trying to start out blogging, you get a lot more traction on Medium than just maybe just blogging on your own personal blog. And um, I've started every single blog that I post on my own blog. I also copy and paste it and put it on Medium. Um, you don't have to do that, uh, but I've found that you reach kind of a whole new audience. It's one of those building things. Like, did, Lynn, do you listen to Pandora music? Yes. Right. So you know how in Pandora, the more things that you give a thumbs up, the more type of music you get. Medium, yes. medium is like Pandora for blogging. Okay. So uh, the more things that you like and recommend, you'll get emails with stories and blog posts like that to your email. And so if somebody likes your blog post, chances of them seeing your next one is much more likely. Uh, so if you kind of think of Medium as a Pandora for blogging, you see there's a lot of value in that, right? Yes. Um, so I think, you know, you're doing it the right way. <laughs> you're posting it on your blog. Um, and the only other things, Medium, Triber, those different types of things are really just to expand your reach so that more people see it. Okay. And you don't have to do all of them. Right. I'm just showing different options. Um, and I would just say pick one or two that, that work for you. Cause I think you're, you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions about medium or, or anything that, that folks have, um, after going through? Um, I had one, I was curious about, um, yeah. the MailChimp for people to subscribe. Was that the only way to set up for subscriptions or was there anything in the Sumo Me or Jetpack or, you know, one of the other plugins that we added that would do that subscribe or was it just the... They can hear you. So um, I, I would say the MailChimp is probably the most professional way to do it, right? Um, but inside of your WordPress Jetpack, people can subscribe to your WordPress blog. Um, so you can set it up so people can just subscribe to your blog and you don't have to do MailChimp or anything like that. Um, I'm going to try to put a link into here before the end of this chat. Uh, but I will add something, uh, Betsy to that first blogging course to make sure that I give you a walk by step by step of how to do that in Jetpack because it's pretty easy to do. How do you get it so it shows up um, as a pop-up instead of just on the side of the screen? Because I know that was something I read in the blogging text that you gave us. Yeah, so that would be with Sumo Me. Did you install Sumo Me as a, as a plugin? I did. So when you when you go Sumo Me, watch that video again because the way you get into Sumo Me is there's something like on the top right of your website when you log in and you would click my tools. And one of the tools in Sumo Me is called List Builder, right? So if, if you remember um, List Builder, Becky, mm -hmm. and you can email me about this you know, personally. Any of these questions you guys have, you can just email me too personally. I can help walk you through it. Um, but List Builder is the one that pops up on the middle okay. of the page. Uh, I remember so, that one. Yeah, it's Sumo Me List Builder. The other okay. ones that I really like for Sumo Me are Welcome Map which is kind of uh, if somebody comes to your website for the first time, it kind of gives them a little preview of kind of what you're all about. Um, and that's a, that's one that converts pretty, pretty well um, consistently as well. Thanks. Good questions. Can, can I ask another question uh, sort of in the same vein? You're in China. Yeah. You ask as many questions as you want. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my, my question has to do actually if you had a blog, but it was a WordPress com blog and then you converted it over to a WordPress org and you had followers, you had people, but they weren't necessarily, I, I, 
how do you move those people over to the WordPress org? Um, so do you still have access to your WordPress.com? Yeah. Yes. I you did do? just archive the site. Yeah. But yes, I still have it. Okay. So, um, there's an article I'm going to share in the chat right here that explains how to move your subscribers over. Okay. Thank you. You see that? Uh, if you see it there, it's in the chat. Uh, but it basically kind of walks you step by step of if you move to a self-hosted site, how to take those followers that you had and move them over. Awesome. Any other questions? I'm excited for you guys to dig into this social media course. Um, you know, there's some practical bits in there, but a lot of it is about attacking your purpose for social media. Like, why are you on social media? What or do you want to build a social media following for, right? How do you leverage the power of your connections on social media? How do you build a tribe on social media? Um, but one of the things that I'm going to keep on harping on this month is that you don't spend the whole month being a follower and you actually, um, do something, uh, to be, a, to be a leader. And, we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but I, I want you to kind of, you know, start something this month on social media, even if it is just a hashtag for your school or your district or your grade level or your team or your subject or whatever that type of thing is. We just launched a new hashtag for the district I'm at, um, hashtag team CSD. And uh, we launched a new district blog with the same title and just taking that act got so many people invested in sharing who never would have shared before, right? Um, so there'll be some different things like that. Yeah, Judy, do you have another question? Sorry, yes. My, my other question has to do about, um, you know, when you heard on Bo Adams, he talked about badges and things like that, which were, was mind boggling. I thought that was <laughs> awesome. And I was also considering like, huh, I bet you I have some badges or I have some things that I'm actually not promoting on my website that I have knowledge of or certification in. And for example, one of them is like Apple teacher. I'm an Apple teacher and I don't actually have it on my website, but I can't figure out how do I put it in there in the widget or I, I don't know. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, um, all those badges, right. And uh, I know Bo was, was talking about kind of all different types of badges, right? But if you're, if you're say, an Apple certified teacher, or maybe you uh, submit your blog to be part of the Teach 100 blogs, so there's all different types of badges you can get. The way that you do it is each badge has an HTML code, okay? So you have to copy that HTML code. Does everybody know what I mean by HTML code? It's that like weird looking computer language <laughs> is the best way to describe it. Uh, so the HTML code, you copy that. And then on your WordPress blog, you go to widgets and you add a new text widget and you copy and paste that HTML code into a text widget. That's how you would get that badge onto your blog. So first you got to find the HTML code for the badge. Then you got to go to your WordPress blog, uh, go to widgets, add a new text widget and copy and paste that HTML code. Okay. Does that make sense? Should I type that out? Makes sense. Fine. I'm going to type it out here too. Anybody else have a, have a question? And I explained that right, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. No, that sounded that sounded right. So. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Betsy said. Uh, Betsy said, "My struggle always. As soon as you say it." I want to go find it, then I miss the next thing. <laughs> All right. If you have a question, though, just send me an email or post in the Facebook group or the Academy, and we'll, we'll jump on it. One of the awesome things about Anthony and Julie is that they are bloggers, they are speakers, they are tweeters. Uh, they're doing all these things as well, so they're really great resources um, you know, for, for all three of us. And, I, and the cool thing about the community is I can't tell you how many times somebody asks a question or shares something out. And one of you is going to answer, right? Everybody's kind of going through the same stuff and we all have different experiences, uh, blogging and doing some of these different things. So, uh, we can share that stuff out as well. I did want to wrap up with uh, one final thing, which is if you are not participating in the global day of design tomorrow, what are you thinking? 
<laughs> right? You should be participating. You should be doing something. Uh, but the Global Day of Design right now, I'll give you, I'm going to blog about it tomorrow, but final numbers, we have 85,000 students signed up participate so far. We have 85,000 students. I'm hoping we get a final push tomorrow. And we have over 800 classrooms around the world, all six continents. We have, we have, we have schools from all six continents, Antarctica. I don't know if there's a school there, but they didn't, they didn't, they're not participating. Um, but all six continents we have schools from the hashtag is going to be awesome. It's hashtag GDD 17, GDD 17. Um, it was rocking last year. So I cannot wait for tomorrow. It's going to be so much fun and uh, make sure if you have students that you're showing them the hashtag too. show them what other kids are making and creating as well. So um, make sure you're participating in some way, some shape, some form, even if that means you're just retweeting what kids are making, that's participating. All right. That's sharing what they're doing. So um, if anybody doesn't have any questions, you guys made it. We were hanging out for an hour. <laughs> Rangers. All right. As Michael said, and uh, thanks again so much for, for jumping in this live Q and a, we're going to do one of these every month and we'll record it. We'll have time for questions, time for introductions and times to just uh, see each other's faces and say hi. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Academy. All right. Good morning. Awesome. Good <laughs> night. Good night. Or good, good morning. Night. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>